Welcome. I'm Steve Johnson, Chief Investment Officer here at Forager Funds. I've looped Gareth Brown into this Zoom hookup to catch up before we head off for the Easter break. How are you going, Gareth? Hi, Steve. Hi, everyone. Gareth, we uh, recorded a webinar, you and I, a little bit over two weeks ago. Uh, we were asked the question about whether we thought the market was going to get worse or better. I prevaricated and you jumped off a cliff and said you thought we were hitting maximum pessimism at that point in time. It was actually the lows for the market that Monday that we recorded the webinar. Things have uh, rallied a long way in terms of equity prices since then. How are you feeling about where the world economy is at the moment, what that means for stock markets, and, and I guess where the risk reward trade-off sits at today's equity prices? Yeah, I think uh, I'm not surprised that the market has rallied. Um, I, I, so that, that sort of played out as I expected. Uh, I do think we're in for a pretty long period of, um, of difficult times here and maybe, maybe more so than I was thinking a couple of weeks ago. Uh, I'm not surprised the market's rallied. I do think that uh, each rally now will be hit by a wall of new stock issuances. Um, I've written a blog post about this on our website but basically people are looking to replace debt with equity at the moment and get their finances on a sound footing. And that the opinion of what is the right amount of debt for a company now has changed dramatically in this last month. No one put, put out VCFs there with prior to this event with 100% downside on, on the revenue. And we've seen that with, with some really you know, good quality businesses that are reporting revenue down 100% at the moment. So, the whole capital structure is in for a revisit, at least in the short term. And uh, I do think that that will sort of um, mute uh, significant rallies from here. And just in terms of those capital raisings, we've seen some really heavily discounted ones here in Australia, even high quality businesses that didn't need huge amounts of money like Cochlear doing um, raisings at 15% discounts to the previous market price. Uh, you've had one in our port international portfolio as well in the UK. We actually participated in another one that we didn't own prior. It's been a very different process overseas from what it is here in Australia. Yeah, sure. I mean, you're probably better placed to talk about those differences than I am. But uh, the the situation is that the I would call the UK system of issuing capital there into a competitive market a very efficient one. Uh, it's a, it's, it goes as a, effectively a tender process. The broker keeps coming back. There's often reference to a stock that's still trading on the market. Whereas in Australia, typically the stock goes into halt and, and the, the banker is in the years of the, the company management saying, look, we're going to need a 40% discount or whatever it happens to be to get this away. And it's sort of a number plucked out of thin air. And it's not necessarily done in a fair way in, in regards to the, the existing shareholders that are unable to participate. Yeah, whereas we saw in the UK, it's basically been an auction where they come back and forth with people. Here's where the price is going to be, uh, give us a range and then try and narrow that down. And we've seen things go through at pretty small discounts to the last traded price and actually trade underneath yeah. uh, that so, price. So it it should it. work more like that here, especially if you're not trying to do a massive recapitalization. I don't see any reason why it shouldn't be more efficient than it is other than investment bankers get paid fat fees and fund managers get to participate in these discounted raisings that are you know, issuing shares at a price they shouldn't be issuing them at. Um, just as we've recovered, as the market has recovered, the first stocks to bounce pretty hard were those least affected by the economic impact of this coronavirus. Just in this past few days, we've seen airlines, travel companies, businesses front and centre, that their share prices have rallied really hard. Smaller cats, illiquids. Yeah, yeah what, what do you think that says and where do you think the opportunities sit right now in terms of opportunities? So I think that the, the I mean, it's, it's, you, you need to take a view on what life looks like in three, six, 12 months. Uh, I think that stocks that got the cheapest, the, the ones that we will look back and say the greatest bargains were in small caps, they were in pointy ended, maybe they were in travel and retail, that sort of stuff but you will also be looking at that through a lens of survivorship bias because there will be some businesses in those sectors that die and uh and you're putting a portfolio together without the benefit of hindsight you 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 face those risks but i think the biggest winners will ultimately also come from that same pool uh you know for us it's a it's a balance here of, of trying to find things that are 
let's say that are not fragile to what's going on, that at least you know have some resilience to it, and then other things that are a bit pointier but are absurdly cheap. And where are you looking? I mean, what what's the the spaces and types of businesses you're spending your time on at the moment? Well, I'm looking in all sorts of places. So the first place I have been looking is the existing portfolio. You know, we had we we bought some more Auto Trader at the lows before the raising. We bought some more um, Flughaven and Vin not quite at the lows, but uh, a lot lower than today's price. Um, just they, they're both good businesses. I've had my eye on some of the stuff that's pointier there. Um, some of it we've been able to execute, some not. And then the wish list gets rolled out next. So I've been looking at small caps in Europe. I've been looking at some stuff in emerging markets, which we're not yet um, decided whether to pull the trigger on. I don't know. I, I don't think those things are necessarily something to be buying in the next week. I think maybe I'm thinking about what's the rotation out of things as we go through fits and starts of recovery here. Um, I've, uh, yeah, uh, looking at some stuff in the US as well. So all sorts of stocks. All right, that's been great. Well, make sure you get some rest. It's been a very hectic few weeks and especially those with young children running around the house, uh, happy birthday to the wife and enjoy your weekend. Thanks, Dave.